just something little can make a really big difference. Every one of them's brought joy to my life, just like I hope I did to them. I'm grateful that I'm able to do something at my age. I'm grateful that the clients know my name and appreciate me for what little I've done. I think it's a two-way street. The volunteers probably get more out of it than the clients do. In 1970, 24% of the population uh, nationwide of people who are over 65 were poor. But in Knox County, 84% of the population over age 65 was poor. So you would have people living alone, hard to get to food, limited income, and that resulted in hunger and malnutrition among the senior population. So this led CAC to submit an application to the Office of Economic Opportunity. The first 20 mobile meals were delivered on November 1st, 1971. We started in a Quonset hut near St. Mary's Hospital and a school prepared the meals at that time. But we had um, route sheets, you know, for and, and, and they changed daily, like they, they do now too, but uh, there were no street signs in that area. And that, that was a challenge. And we'd say, they'd say, turn at the big oak tree, or, you know, go to the red brick house. And uh, that was interesting. But Mobile Mills was, uh, you know, part of getting street signs put up. Uh, things were really, really going well. We had all this special funding from this uh, competition that we had won. But who would have thought that President Nixon would veto the HEW appropriation bill, which contained a hundred million dollars for funding mobile meals programs on a national basis. We reached out to Mayor Kyle Testament and told him about the situation and what we were facing. And he provided $75,000 in general revenue sharing money to tide the program over. So Barbara, you know, was responsible for mobile meals. And in 1977, she also became the director of the uh, Office on Aging. And of course, I think of her as um, a spark plug, small but mighty, gets things started, keeps things running. That kind of person that you need to create a program like Mobile Meals. Barbara took the knowledge that she had gained through her degree and her RD in nutrition and adapted that knowledge to make sure that the senior community in Knox County would have what they need at home. Barbara Monty had a vision to have a mobile meals kitchen, a place where we could serve, prepare quality food, where we could make things easier for the volunteers, where we could save money and serve more people. Mayor Ash provided land in the Malcolm Martin Park as a perfect location for the mobile meals kitchen. And Mayor Ragsdale provided a unique funding arrangement whereby the building could be built and the cost of that could be handled over a period of, of time. We were so thrilled to be in our own building, just so ready to be able to take our meal service to the next level, which is exactly what we did. Some people don't have 
the ability to get out of their home, and so this gives them a chance to not only receive a meal, but to interact with people. I mean, most of them are homebound, and so they may not be getting a daily social interaction with anybody but their mobile meals deliverer. So I think it's important that they have that resource and that connection with the community. We've laughed with them, we've cried with them, we've prayed with them, we talked sports with them, and, and just the interaction between us and them, they are just so, such sweet people, and we really enjoy it. I just try to reflect my experience, and hopefully that other people will be interested too, and, and once you get started, you just, you know, want to keep doing it, and it's just very, such a rewarding experience. Burchett was here, he was delivering meals as part of the Mayor's March for Meals. And Mayor Burchett said, what is going on with the building over there, pointing to the kitchen? We said, well, you know, we're, FEMA hasn't acted, the insurance company hasn't acted, and we're kind of stuck. Well, he said, well, I'm going to take care of that. And he did. And we were able to rebuild the Mobile Meals kitchen and actually operate the way we were intended to operate. You know, it's important that, uh, you know, somebody uh, be able to take a meal. If you didn't, you know, they wouldn't eat. If uh, we didn't deliver. It takes special people to do the job. And that goes back before Lefty and who prepares it, who plans it. It's a big job. One of the ladies, uh, Cecilia, and each time I come to her house, she's always in the window waiting on me every Wednesday. Either she's in the window or her cat's in the window. And one Wednesday we came and she was not in the window. And I thought, and the cat's not there, something's going on. Knocked on the door numerous times, she never answered, and she's always there. So, um, called the office, and they had the management do a welfare check, and she was in her home unconscious. And that just always stands out to me, and I always remember that, and that's why I try never to um, cancel. I, my world revolves around Mondays and Wednesdays um, for mobile meals. Because, you know, I think if I had been later that day or not shown up, whenever I'm volunteering, I realize that there's someone who's expecting me and I have a commitment to that person. I don't know what I would have done with that mobile meals to feed me every day. I really don't. Well, I am here by myself during the day most of the time. But you got hot food. Usually a dessert, I like to get an apple and an orange. Bubble meal. It's a welcome sound. Good morning. How are you today? Every Monday through Friday at the home of 83-year-old Midge Stewart, who gratefully accepts a hot meal and a chance to visit. How's your little doggy doing today? Oh, she's, she's fine. Midge is a widow who lives with her faithful dog, Rosie. Her children, now grown, are spread out. Heart problems and arthritis prevent her from doing what she once really enjoyed. I could put a wonderful meal on the table, and I loved to do that. It meant everything to me. I can stay here, and I don't have to worry about being hungry. Hi. It was a surprise delivery for 86-year-old Maxine Payne. That horrible snow this morning, I didn't think it was ever going to stop. It got heavier and heavier. Which is why she's grateful. I'm always glad to see them, and they've always got a smile, and they really are a blessing. I couldn't praise God more than this for that for what they've done. For the food that you're getting here. Yes, sir, the food is, it's fantastic. I have a hot meal every day at lunch. And I say, I, I can't stand up very long. What's it mean to you seeing these folks that come? They're donating their time. 
They're from the bottom of their heart, and they love people. They love people. <laughs> well, I am serious, trust me. I'm 97 now, and I think that God's blessed me richly. I'm telling the truth on these. I have met some wonderful people and some glorious meals, truthfully. It was a scary time for a lot of our seniors. You know, their lives had kind of been turned up on end. Their family wasn't coming around. They were scared to leave their homes. They didn't know what to do. Their health conditions became worse pretty rapidly. But to be able to, to take such a scary moment in time for, for the senior population in particular and just say, yes, we can help you, I was just so thankful that we were able to do what we could do and not even have to hesitate. People don't realize there's people out there that can go a day without eating and go go 24 hours without talking to anybody. So it's the contact and it's it's the nutritious meal we provide and it's just the, the daily check-in and make sure they're okay. My dad did it in New York City and when he passed away, I picked it up in 1994. I said, well, how could I honor him? So this is how I honor him. You know, he passed away suddenly and so it's something I started, and I didn't think I'd be doing it 27 years later, but here I am. They just are like a treasure trove of wisdom for my kids and for me, and they'll tell me when their kids were acting up, and you know, so it's just a great relationship, and I love them. They're like my grandparents, you know? <laughs> yes, on the wheels. One of my mobile meals clients who was bedridden, his wife had died, and he was going to a nursing home. And I said, well, can you take your dog? He said, no. I said, what are you gonna do with him? He said, I've decided to give him to you. So with nearly sudden heart failure, I had the dog. He's now three years old. He's the love of my life, doesn't have a tooth, and he's deaf. When I think about the volunteers, um, they are an amazing group of people in the sense that they're willing to give up their time, their resources, their car, their gas in most cases, to go out and not only locate, which sometimes is a real challenge, but to enter into someone's home and their life, to take them a meal, to provide them food. And so there's a lot of emotion that goes into volunteering for mobile meals. But again, the rewards of that outweigh the, the, the down days or the sad days or, or the things that happen. I think it's helped me interact better with people that I don't talk to on a daily basis. And it makes you have a new appreciation for all of the blessings that I have. And I've really learned that through Mobile Meals. It's made me more aware of uh, some of the needs of the elderly here in the community, especially. Everybody has different circumstances and that makes it kind of interesting, but there's a lot of diversity among the clients that we serve. And it's fun to just get to interact with a bunch of different kind of people within that one or two hour span every day. I often think about the clients and how, um, how they feel, you know, kind of being out on their own, um, being really vulnerable, having to open up their lives to someone they don't know. You know, we're able to make that connection between volunteer and client so, so they can stay in their home safely. It's just a difficult place for people sometimes as they're getting older to have to ask for help. I'm just, you know, thankful for our community for all the support they give and looking forward to the next 50 years of Mobile Meals. Congratulations to the Mobile Meals program and the, the administrative team and all the volunteers that participate in it for a great 50 years and I look forward to another good 50 years. Mobile Meals, I'd like to congratulate you on 50 years that you provided one of the most wonderful services to the people of Knoxville. What an accomplishment and I know you're just going to keep going strong. Congratulations to Mobile Meals on 50 years. Let's hope 
in the future, uh, less and less people need Mobile Meals. Congratulations, Mobile Meals, on 50 years, and thank you. Well, a big happy birthday to Mobile Meals here in Knoxville. Congrats, everybody, on 50 years. That is an enormous accomplishment, and um, keep working hard, and I can't wait for more. Congratulations, 50 years, Mobile Meals. Keep the good work up. <laughs>